Don't these weeks fly by, Greg? They do, yeah, Jason. Saturday morning again. Well, it's nice Wednesday, isn't it? Saturday morning, Greg. No wonder it flies by. We're doing them Saturday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Another week has passed since last Saturday's episode, Greg. Oh, you mean when it went on? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not actually flown by. No? Okay. Saturday morning. Coming up on today's Saturday morning show, Greg, mm -hmm. we are having a spot of toilet trouble. Is it blocked again? All will be revealed. We are also talking about some British TV shows that were remade in America and completely bombed. Gonna have to think of a little bit of a snappier title for that though. I don't know, if you say it fast it's got a ring to it. Go on, go. I don't think I can. Go on, do it. British TV shows that went to America and remade and actually bombed. UK shows that flopped. Anyway, Greg, we are talking about UK shows that were remade in America. Good one. Who came up with that idea? Greg's second idea this year, and it's only February. Unbelievable. Go on then, Greg, since it's your idea, let's hear your first one. Fa that really hurt. Faulty Towers? Faulty Towers was remade in America. Yeah. I'm just going to check my uh, notes here. It was actually done three times. There was one pilot that never even made it anywhere, and there was one called Amanda's, which was a woman playing Basil. Basil. Yeah, and there was a big uproar about that. Um, and the woman was the girl out of the Golden Girl, the tall one. Oh, uh, B. Arthur but playing Dorothy. Is she the tall one? Yeah, yeah, it was her, and she was the nasty hotel runner, like a B and B. I can see that. Mm. However, I can't see that it would have been anything like Faulty Towers. One series. 13 episodes, three weren't shown, so it obviously right. didn't go well. There was another one called Pain, and I've never heard of that, uh, but it bombed. So they tried to remake it three times three and times. didn't work at all? Only Amanda's, I think, properly got shown. No, no, no! What you want is 102. It is a much quieter room. Aldo! Aldo, please take our charming and distinguished guests up to room 102. <laughs> Distinguished guests, 102. Huh? <laughs> You'll have to excuse him. He's from Toronto. See, see, see. Okay, come, come, come. Have a wonderful stay. And please, please, if there is anything that you should want, you can take a flying leap. <laughs> I said, have a wonderful sleep. It's only because of her. She's a name, isn't she? Mm. So, yeah. I've got one for you, Greg. Go on, then. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler, if you think old England's done? No? Marsh. No, Greg. <laughs> Dad's Army. Oh, yeah, yeah, got you. Yeah. Was remade in America called The Rear Guard. Let me just uh, refer to my notes here. Uh, it was a 1976... Uh, pilot episode for an American adaption of our British Dad's Army called The Rear Guard, set in World War II, uh, and it was about the American civil defence, which I'm guessing is the equivalent of our home army, the home guard, or whatever they were called. Mm -hmm. And? Um, it was based on the deadly attachment in which a German U-boat crew are placed under the supervision of the platoon. The pilot show aired on Tuesday, August the 10th in 1976. 76? And no further episodes were ever made. Oh. The tapes that it were uh, filmed on were wiped, and the only person who has a copy, the show's director, Hal Cooper. Oh, and the other producers that were associated with the show. So I'm probably not going to find a clip of that one anywhere, am I? Let's find out. You can put down whatever you want, but you're not going to win this war. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, no, you're Oh, not. yes, we oh, are. Oh, Adolf Hitler is a jerk. He's nothing but a Nazi. He thinks that he will win the war. He's not so hot, see? Hot, see? <laughs> Your name will also go on the list. <laughs> what is it? Don't tell him, Henderson. Henderson, thank you. Do you want my next one? Hang on. Go on then. It was The Young Ones, Jason. The Young Ones? Now, I think The Young Ones... Hands up, who likes me? 
I think the young ones in the States is very popular from over here, isn't it? Ah, young ones, is yeah. yeah. Ah, it's, it's, ah it's, um, but I think they tried to do their own version or they sold the rights, and Nigel Planner Planner. is the only, yeah, but I was, I'm from Birmingham, Planner. Um, and that's not where we're filming, though, is it? Uh, just in case you're trying to follow us, um, stalkers. Uh, he was the only one originally in that one, and right. it, they did a pilot, never got shown, bombed. Wow. And it was called Oh No Not Them. Because we did an episode about the uh, fifth housemate, didn't we? Yeah. The it's hidden fascinating, housemate. that is. If you haven't seen it, look up one of our older videos. And quite a few people commented on that from America that said they had our young ones and they loved it. But I would have thought it's one of those things that didn't really translate because of the humour. Sometimes we have a bit of a humour barrier between us and our friends in the States, don't we? Well, it was a funny time then as well, wasn't it? The culture was different then. That comedy was changing then. Alternative comedy. <laughs> yeah. That was the phrase. It was, and it was a big change. And a lot of the people like Morecambe and Wise and all them, they didn't like it. Alternative to funny, all the old people used to say because they didn't like it. You can see why they're a bit worried, because they were never going to go down that road, were they? No. So that's interesting, isn't it, Greg? It is, isn't it? Three UK shows that uh, were remade for an American audience and never made it. Perhaps next week, Greg, we could do three American shows that were made for a UK audience that we didn't get. Like it. <laughs> Just spent the last five minutes trying to unblock our toilet, and there's nothing wrong with it, is there? No, it's this, Greg. This. Ooh. This is Toilet Trouble, a new game from Hasbro. This isn't sponsored, by the way. We should be, shouldn't we? Hasbro want to send us some money. We've done all the games. games. We do. Um, and oh, we were going to do some more board games, weren't we? Yeah, we are. MB Games. Next week? Yeah. Got you. So, this is Toilet Trouble. So Popular on the internet at the moment, but it's only just become available over here. Tell me all about Toilet Trouble. What it is, is Tell me all about your Toilet Trouble. <laughs> well, how long have you got? No, 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 the game. Oh. Well, what you do is it's a bit like Pie Face, Greg, in that you spin this here, oh, gives yeah. you a number, yeah, like three, go. and then you flush the toilet three times. If you hear a flushing sound and it doesn't spray anything, that's spray fine. anything? Yeah. You never mentioned anything about this? But, you might press the toilet and it might flush and squirt you in the face. Great. That's going to be me again, I suppose, then. Well, what are you going to... I mean, it's empty at the moment. Apple juice, Greg. See, you say apple juice, how will I ever know? Well, you'll taste it if it squirts you in the face. So I filled it with apple juice, Greg. Now what happens is, obviously, <laughs> As always, we're not just going to play this game as it is. We're going to turn this into Toilet Trouble Telly Addicts. <laughs> Genius, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Remember Telly Addict Pie Face? Yeah, I remember it really well. You didn't get covered once, did you? No. So I believe you've prepared some questions, and I have prepared some questions. Who's going to go first? Rock, paper, scissors? One, two, three. One, two, three. Right, so I'm going to ask you a question. If you get it wrong, you've got to spin that wheel, see how many times you've got to flush, turn it towards you, flush the toilet. Yeah. Why are you grinning? What? I've just got a feeling. So <laughs> I've got a feeling, number one, that's real we. And secondly, you fixed it. I'm going to get soaked how again. How can I fix it, Craig? And then you've got the whole world to know that I'm covered in your apple juice. Right, Greg. In Airwolf. Who played Stringfellow Hawk? I can't think of his name. Do, 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 I can't think. Do, 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 do. Give me the first letter. Well, no, you've got it wrong now, but I will. Just on, to... What? Shh. Stuart. No, <laughs> it's not. That's his character name. I can't. Shh. I don't know. Shh. Jean Michel Vincent or Jean Michael Vincent? I'd have got the last bit, Vincent. I wouldn't have got the first bit. I forgot. So you now have to, Greg. You have to, Greg. You now, Greg, have to spin that what, toilet just... roll at the side. Oh, yes, just the one. Is that a one or a seven? No, that's definitely a one. So I've got. To... You've got to turn that towards you, and you've got to press the flusher. <laughs> but that's definitely apple juice, yeah. Definitely. I mean, you're not going to get it on the first one, are you? Surely. I don't know. 
Yeah. Are you wet? No. No? Right, ask me a question, Greg. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Any time today? I just think that's a bit easy. I've, I've picked an easy one here. Tommy Boyd and Michelle Strachan, Michaela Strachan, sorry, present which program on the weekend in the eighties? Wackaday or the Wide Awake Club? Which one are you going to go with, Jason? Well, they're both the same thing. They're not really, are they? Wide Awake Club. I suppose I have to give you it then, won't I? Greg, Roland Rat's friend Errol is what kind of animal? A mouse. Is that your final answer, Greg? It's a rat. It's a gerbil. <laughs> it's a hamster. <laughs> oh, I've just gone there, everything. Can you spin the spinner? Is that on three? That's definitely on two. Oh, my eyes are battering. Look how my eyelids are I'm scared. That's two. One, isn't it? Two. <laughs> Is it apple juice, Greg? I don't really want to think about it just, just yet. Thanks. Are we, we playing another round? Looks like it, doesn't it, Jason? Oh, no, Greg. <clears throat> Who is the head mistress that was in Grange Hill? Mrs. McCluskey. Uh, no, I said, who, what was her real name? No, you didn't. The, the real name answers here. Oh, it's not Greg. Greg. Do you remember Lucy from Neighbours? No. What was her boyfriend called? Oh, I don't know. David Joshua. Bradley. I love that. Do that again now. Spin that, yeah. One. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, we'll start again. Won't be again, will it? I mean, I should go in there. I mean, I should go in. Right, you ready? Yes. Okay, let's get this going there. Who presents Record Breakers? Roy Castle and Cheryl Baker. Dedication's what you need. All right, get on with it. And again, Greg, nice easy question. What sort of business does Billy Boswell run in bread? Oh, gotta get, up, gotta get out. Billy does a removal service. <laughs> Grab the world by the throat. It is it? Rem it is removal. Is it a removal van? It's a sandwich business. Oh, it's the wrong one. I've got the wrong brother. Oh. <laughs> I'm dying. One. Come on. Okay, here we go. Uh. Who were the three presenters of Blue Peter in 88 and 89? Oh my goodness me. I'll get you up two out of three. That's how good I'm being. Because that is a tough one. Karen Keating. That's one. And what's the face who does the ghost programme now? Yvette Fielding. You could have gone with all three then, couldn't we really? <laughs> you said two, Greg. Mark Corey was the other one. Thanks very much. Who? Is the piano playing dog in the Muppet Show? <laughs> Come on, Greg. Piano playing dog. Gertrude. <laughs> Ralph. Ralph. Are you making this up? No. The brown dog. You haven't even had a go yet. Spin the thing. You chose your questions, Greg. Warm again. Yeah, oh, I've got to get out. You've got to get this one wrong. What's the name of Inspector Gadget's dog? Oh, ploppity plop. Brains! <laughs> Alright, last one now. I'm not doing any more. Who plays Russ Abbott's Blunder Woman? I don't know her name, the big one. Oh, of course you do. No, Everyone I don't know her name. Oh, do they? Yeah. Yeah, but what's yeah, your, what's your favourite, like what was your favourite programme in the 80s? My favourite programme? Ru the Ross Abbott Show. Yeah. So you're going to know all about that, aren't you? I liked it, but I didn't know the names of it. What's my favourite programme? I don't know. Bella Emberg, Greg. Oh, Spin the thing. Bella Emberg, yeah. Love the old Emberg. Three, Greg. That's a three, that. 
What are you grinning? I don't know. Two. No. Two. If this doesn't get you. <laughs> Greg, that was Toilet Trouble Telly Addict. How'd you feel? Wet. Oh, everyone got last week's, didn't they? It was a bit easy last week. So but we it? had to do an easy one, because the week before was so ridiculous. His horse was called Friday. His horse was he called Friday. He rode into town on Friday and stayed for two nights and left town on Friday. I'm glad it wasn't called Gladys. He rode in on Gladys. But then it wouldn't make sense, would it? He rode in on Gladys, stayed for two nights and rode out I on just Gladys. meant because it would have been quite rude, wouldn't it? Riding on Gladys. Anyway, do you want another one? I don't like them. They give me headaches. Edward's mother has three children. One is called April, another is called May. What is the third child called? Say again. Edward's mother has three children. One is called April, another is called May. What is the third child called? How are we supposed to know that? I've not met them, have I? <laughs> I don't know. I give up. Do you know the answer? Let us know in the comments below your answer to this week's Riddle Me This. <laughs> I've got one of them headaches again, Greg. Isn't it weird? It always, like, you know, turns up when I bed to the joke. I know, strange. It's weird, isn't it? You've been the doctors? Just get on with that, will you? I saw this bloke and he was shouting, lambs for sale, they were £10 and now £5. I thought, that's sheep at half the price. It's time for a commercial break. I know what breakfast is on about. It's ready break, there ain't no doubt. Get my spoon round that yummy stuff. Without it, mornings would be kind of tough. And so it would seem, as a rule, it's ready break that makes me really cool. Get up and glow with ready break. Keeping house can become a problem. Come to Curry's for sale prices now. Save £14 on this Electrolux vacuum cleaner. And £11 off their compact model, now £63.99. Save £40 on the Philips Auto washing machine. And this Hoover from the new Electron range, only £189.99. Curry's price promise means you can't buy cheaper. And we've got sale prices now. That's why we're the electrical people where everything clicks. Well, that was a fun, filled, fun, packed, sun packed episode, wasn't it, Greg? We couldn't even squeeze a fart out this week, could we? Oh, you. Oh, yeah. It's no time. If you've got anything to send us, please send it to this email address, tnt at totgoo.com. That's t n t at t o t g o o com. It does not have been capital. No, it doesn't. Send us your pictures, 80s stories, anything you want to send us, really, apart from abuse. We don't really like that, do we, Greg? Um, we're going to do some more retro collectors, aren't we, Greg? What is retro collectors for them that have Retro that cool collectors place? is a series we started last year or the year before where we go around car boots and charity shops and things to try to find retro goodies to share with you not you them mm. uh, and we've made five episodes so far and we often get asked when is the next episode of retro collectors going to be well we are working on one at least one aren't we greg oh yeah i forgot we did that one yeah, and that are, will yeah. be coming out very, very soon. In the meantime, that's all we've got time for today, isn't it, Greg? It's sad, isn't it? Yep, yeah, I'm going to go and wash this juice off my face now. Juice. It we will. It better have been juice. We'll see you again next week on Tea and Toast.